Hello guys, my name is Ramik, and in today's video we will talk about how to very easily increase the performance of an eFramework core by using the bulk operations. And in this tutorial we will use the example of having the products table, inside of it we will have a lot of records, and we would like to execute the delete for all of those products at once with only one database delete statement, and also we will update specific resources based on their category, with using also one update statement at once. So if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, then please hit the subscribe button down below, write a comment, give me a like, and as always, now going straight into the topic. All right, guys, so now we'll go through what we actually have and what we would like to achieve in this tutorial. So as you see on the screen, we have the product class that has corresponding to it products table, and this is assigned in the DB context, so bulk operations DB context, and also we have the constraint that the price will be the type of the decimal. And now going to the database itself, we see that we have about 100,000 records that I have generated with the Bogus library that has school, office, or the car category. And it has different prices. And we would like to create the endpoint that will bulk update all of those prices based on our factor and also based on the category that we'll provide. And then we'll compare also the time of updating and deleting without those bulk operations and also with those bulk operations. Now I will create a module that will be called products module and in here we'll define our endpoints. So it will be the static class and we'll use the method called public static void at products endpoints and it will be the extension method for i endpoint root builder called app and inside of it and here we'll create the first endpoint and it will count for us how many products we have in our database products table so it will be the app map get products products count and after that we'll use the async keyword and we'll inject bulk operations db context db context and inside of it we'll return the results okay and it will be await db context products count async. Now we have to add also this extension method in the program CS file. So it will be called app dot add products endpoints. And now we'll have all of those endpoints defined in the products module in the swagger itself. Now we have to implement those two endpoints for updating the products based on their category for how many percent we would like to increase the price of those products. And as you see, we have a very simple validation in this endpoint and this endpoint for the category to update and for also the percent. And now we have to define the price factor for the multiplication of our current price. So if you would like to increase the price for the 10%, let's say, so you need the price factor of 1.1 in that case. So now we have to define price factor and it will be equal to one plus the percent value and then also we need to divide this with this value so we have the price factor as we discussed before and now unfortunately we need to load about 33,000 products based on the category to our memory to have the for each loop and increase the price based on this price factor. So as you see, it's not the very efficient way. And also the performance is very poor in that case. So the bulk operation that will create in just a second will be more efficient because we will not load any records into our memory, everything will be executed in the database side. So we need to create the products to update list and it will be the await db context products products where of course where the category is equal to the category to update and then to list 
async method. And now down below, we need to use the for each loop row. Of our product in products to update, we need to use the product dot price to be multiplied our price factor. And now we need to also get how many rows were affected just for our purpose in that case. So it will be rows affected will be equal to the await db context save changes async and we will return results dot ok and with the dollar sign it will be the rows affected and we will take this rows affected integer value in here. Now we will intend the second endpoint to update all of those products but with having bulk operation applied from a digital work core so it will reduce for us the code of having the for each loop and also loading everything into the memory and it will look exactly like this. So you have the price factor as before, but we are filtering category to update. We are not using us in here to this async to load into our memory. No, we'll use the execute update async after the filtering based on the category. And then we'll have the set of set property calls. So if you would like to increase the price, let's say in my case, I will use p dot set property and in here we'll use the price. So it will be the first argument, what kind of the property you would like to update. And after comma, you need to define what will be the difference or what will be the updated value of this specific property. And if you would like to have more of those properties updated, then of course you can use also dot in here and use the same set property just to set multiple properties at once if you would like to update your specific entities in the database. So now after doing all of that, we have at once how many rows will be updated and now we'll return as before how many rows were affected. Now we'll also compare the performance of having this endpoint with the forage loop and loading into the memory and also with having the bulk operation applied. As you see, my API is up and running and it returns for us 100,000 rows. So how many of those products we have in our product table? So 100,000. And now I will use this put endpoint for updating without having the bulk operations applied with the category to update the office and also for how many percent, so 100%. So as you see also, I have filtered all of those based on the category office. We have about 33,000 records. And after that, we will check if the price was increased or not for all of those products. So. I'll just send this put request. And as you see, it took 3.5 seconds to execute what we actually requested. So rows affected 33,488 and it was very, very long. So now we'll check if it was affected or not. So I will just, yeah, as you see, all the prices were increased 100% more. So now we have to use also the second endpoint just to check if it will be more efficient than the first one. And I will just change this update without bulk with update with bulk. So it will be the second endpoint with having the bulk operations. So I will send once again, as you see, rows affected with 131 milliseconds. And also we have the same result. So rows affected 33,488. And we'll check if it was done or not. As you see, all of those prices also increased in 100%. So as you have 
Now noticed that performance is very crucial here. So we reduced this time of applying the update statement for all those products to less than 0.2 seconds. So 131 milliseconds in that case. And now we will implement another two endpoints. The first one to delete all the products based on the category to delete without bulk operation. And the second one will be the same, but with having bulk operation applied. So in this first one, we need to load as before with the first update endpoint, as it was defined there, we have to load all of those products the memory and then we'll use the remove range method. So I will just copy this one and it will be the category to delete and it will be the category to delete as well. So we have the list of those products and now db context products remove range and we need to pass those products to delete, then integer rows affected will be equal to await db context save changes async. And now we'll return results dot okay and as before rows affected will be the rows affected. And now the second endpoint with bulk operation will be as follows. So we'll have integer rows affected and it will be equal to the await db context dot products dot where. So as well, we have to filter based on the category to delete. So it will be the category equal to the category to delete. And now the only thing that we need to do there is just to use the execute delete async method. So execute delete async. So we are filtering based on the category and then we are using only one statement to delete everything at once. So now also we are returning the results dot okay. And we'll use the same as it was defined above. And now we'll test the performance of delete without bulk operation and also delete with bulk operation applied. So before we were updating the products with the category called office, and as we see, the prices are updated in fact. And now we'll test the performance of having delete without bulk operation just to delete everything that has the category office. So now I will send this request. As you see, it takes also very long as before with the update. Yeah, it was about six seconds. And now we'll check also if all of those were deleted or not. So as we see in our database, we have no products with the category called office. And now I have another category called school. As we see, we have a lot of those once again. And now we'll change from the delete without bulk to delete with bulk. So the category to delete will be not the office, but the school. And we'll check the performance. It was, as you see, six seconds. And now it was about 259 milliseconds. So as we have seen, when you're using the bulk operations, then your performance is way better and you are not loading anything into your memory as the normal approach we have done here. So you are not using the to list async and you are not using the for each loops. And also you are not using the remove range method and also as before, not loading anything into your memory. So it's the key in terms of performance to use the execute delete async and also execute update async with updating specific properties of your entity.